I think we can do this. Daisy, I've been thinking, and you know thinking it is a sin. If they ask you where you going, just tell them where it is you've been. Monday through to Friday, I shall them days as what must be. Till I try steal my mornings from these agents of misery. Amen. That's it. That's it right there. That's it. I try to steal my mornings from these agents of misery. That's what he said right there. And that's uh that's Coley Garrett or Garrett. Coley Garrett. And that song is called Ode to Daisy. And um, I'll have the link to that, uh, to, to that SoundCloud and the song in the, in the information below the podcast. Hello. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, kind of a different, you know, uh, you know, it's Thursday. So happy Thursday to you. And uh, yeah, I just slipped over into the studio. You know, I got some chairs coming. I was going to try to have a guest today and couldn't get it. Couldn't um, couldn't get chairs in, in time to be lined up and uh, ordered some chairs, and they got two chairs coming. And so, you know, it's nice when you had them chairs coming, you know, when you got... Because if you have a chair, eventually you have a place to put somebody. Because that's the thing, if you're just standing around with somebody, that's at a certain point, that shit will get awkward. But boy, you got that chair, you say, hey, let me uh, let me introduce your ass to a little bit of peace right here. And then you sit their ass down into a chair. And that's crazy. Can you think about that? Somebody even invented a chair? Think about that. Like a long time ago, everybody was just standing around. People just standing around like, now what? And then finally, you know, some straight up, I'm going to be honest, hero came along and said, ta-da! And everybody was, I mean, that must have been like, it must have been like uh, like marijuana almost at first. Just putting your butt and your leg and your thighs onto a, just a place to rest them. Oh, can you imagine? Can you imagine that you've been standing up for years? You've been standing up for years. Your family, your father's been standing up. Your grandfather has great posture. Everybody got posture because they've been standing like a motherfucker. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, some some beautiful little carpenter, some dirty little w- wood martyr comes along and just chisels out a damn seat. And you set that ass into a chair for the first time. Mm. I mean, I bet semen just leaks out of your pores. Can you imagine how good that feels? Just that full body coom, you know? Just cooming out of your whole, just out of your pores. Just. (sighs) Or just imagine seeing, watching your grandfather sit down for the first time. Just the the tears that would come out of his eyes after being alive, you know? Because in those, in the old, old, old days, I'm talking, you know, back when people probably didn't, barely just had necklaces and stuff like that. People barely had even a lot of ideas, just a lot of necklaces and just, you know, a lot of undercooked meat in those days. And so everybody's been standing and then somebody comes along and makes a chair. (sighs) Can you even fathom that feeling? That first seat. Just take a sit, bro. Just take a sit, huh? And watching your grandfather who's been standing up his whole life, which at that time was probably, you know, senior citizens were 40 years old back then. You know, if you weren't like by 45, you were going to die of the elements or yellow fever, or, you know, um, lightning. Lightning killed way more people back then because we didn't have houses. Think about that. Like right now, yeah, there's lightning out there. You don't even know it. 
back in the old days, if there was lightning, okay, if the lords were shooting straight up fireworks at your scalp, you knew it. But imagine, you know, your grandfather, you know, 40-year-old grandfather. Because, yeah, by 45, he was going to be dead of fever or wolves. Wolves, I mean, in the old days, think about how many wolves probably got 25% of the population. Wolves. But imagine him, just he's been alive for 39 years, you know. And he gets to sit down for that first time in a chair and just. And that's beautiful. And that's beautiful. I don't even know why I'm talking about that. I forgot why we even got on that tangent. But thank you guys for being here with me today. Oh, I just came in here and I just sat down and, you know, and it's Thursday night. And it's, uh, I mean, it's Thursday and it's, you know, we want to give that hitter to you. You know, we want to give that hitter. And speaking of hitters, we got Gray Block Pizza. And you know Gray Block Pizza is out here in Los Angeles at 1811 Pico Boulevard on the way to the beach. You going to get some sunshine? You know what goes good with UV rays? Gang, gang, that hitter. So fill your gullet with that Italian bullet, baby. Shoot yourself in the throat with some Gray Block Pizza. Oh, what's up, man? Uh, you know, I still, I, I, like... I got the episode from last from Monday's episode on my mind, honestly, and on my heart a little bit. They had that, you know, the young fella from London called up, and I got a ton of responses about it. You know, a lot of people could just feel that cat, you know, just feel that little British kitten. They could feel him leaking a little. They could feel his emotion. You know, when you hit, when you when you find some emotion, it's just it's a it's 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 amazing that even through. Just airwaves through. I mean, he, first of all, he hit the hotline. He come from Britain, United Kingdom over there. Well, who knows what they're doing? You know, they're still fighting all kinds of diseases and everything. Rats, the plague, all kinds of shit. They have a queen. These are people that still have a queen. And he calls up here, you know, because he has struggles and he has, you know, he's feeling discomfort. You know, and he's feeling uneasy inside of himself and he hits that hotline. And that call comes across the, the, the universe. That call comes across the universe. Like somebody just took a handful of, of, of words and feelings and bunched them into a ball and threw them as hard as they could across the Atlantic. And then they landed right here in the studio. And then we blasted them back out. We blasted, we're turning that double play, you feel me? We blasted that thing back out. And we got a lot of responses, man. So we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll, yeah, just had a lot of responses. I'll get to some of those, you know, those calls that came in for that young man. And and this is a follow-up episode, so I'm going to get right into the follow-up, you know? I mean, why, you know, what why, What am I going to move it around for? When am I going to do it later? Always I'm like, I'm going to do this later, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this shit right now. You know, we got some things to talk about on here today. I mean, I got a brain full of all types of things. You know, I can't stop thinking about, you know, I've been seeing a therapist and I don't know if I want to go anymore. You know, and, and, and it's risky because it's like, you know, I know that I'm not well. But I also know that, I, you know, I have a couple weeks in there where it's like, ah, I just don't know if I have a lot to talk about. And then, and then suddenly I, I get the idea that, oh, I, well, I don't need this anymore. So, you know, that's kind of something that's been pressing in my brain, you know, because you're shelling out that loot every time. You know, I'm shelling out 150 U.S. to go see this little brain baby, to go see this, you know, uh, adult therapist. And I respect her, you know, and it's just, uh, you know, you start, but, but that part of your brain that's probably not even the well part, the probably the unhealthy part of my brain starts saying, man, you don't need this shit, man. You don't need this shit. You know, let's get back out there. You know, let's sell cabbages. You know, let's get some blow cane. So it's tough, man. It's a tough dribble. It's a tough dribble. What else I feel you and what else has been going on with me? You know, I had, uh, I had, um, you know, I had a, a, a lady I've been spending time with. And, you know, I've been realizing for me that it's hard to, uh, it's hard for me to, you know, I started having like some thoughts like, man, well, you know, this girl's really special, you know, and maybe I could see like some type of a future. And it's just hard for me to even share that and say it, like to verbalize it. 
you know, like I could feel it. I can, you know, kind of know it, I think, some places in my body, but to actually say it, you know, just like some of the first time I've ever had some of that stuff where it's like, man, I, you know, I, I really care, you know, I care and I want, you know, I want to say like, you know, part of me wants to, you know, say those things and like say, look, you know, I see us maybe, you know, what if we had a little bit of a fucking yard, you know, that's how I, you know, I'll drive it like, what if we had a, uh, you know, what if we, you know, use the same blender, you know, I get scared to share, you know, I think the facts that somewhere inside of me, I'd love to maybe even have a family and have a, uh, you know, have a, you know, an animal, a couple, you know, uh, you know, non-livestock, but, you know, a couple G pigs, maybe a couple of, um, you know, dogs and cats, outdoor animals, probably. Because I don't know if I'm competing in the house, man. I don't want to wake up in the middle of the night and see two dogs fucking out in my hallway. I'm not doing that, man. I'm not running, you know, some kind of a pet brothel. I want to, I want, you know, I, I, but I, you know, but I, it's like never in my life have I thought I would want those things. You know, I thought all of that shit, I thought, man, that's gay, you know. I thought that that's lame. You know, oh, you got a, oh, you got a family van. That's, I hope y'all get shot up by some bangers. You know, I used to think all of that. But I think a lot of that stuff was probably, uh, you know, just came from the fact that I didn't, since I didn't have it growing up, I didn't have any respect for it. You know, since I didn't have any, uh, since I didn't have it growing up, I didn't have any respect for it. Oh, your parents have a happy marriage, man. Fuck them, you know. Oh, you're, uh, you know, um, you know, you got, y'all just moved into a new house, man. Fuck that. Y'all are sellouts. You know, I always had all of that shit. If I didn't have it, then fuck you because you had it or fuck it. You know, and just, you know, and then to just be, you know, now I'm like thinking about really, you know, sharing some of these things, just saying, you know, and the most I could even get myself to say was like, you know, what if. You know, what if we owned a, you know, a cat together, you know, or what kind of silverware do you like? You know, just things like that where I'm like, wow, you know, it's just hard to imagine that. It's hard for me to really, you know what it is, even beyond it being hard really to, it's hard to realize that maybe part of me really wants that and to honor that part. Instead of just always honoring uh, the part of me that just wants to say no to that, if that makes any sense. You know, to sit there and, and just tell a person you care about, you know, like gloves off. You know, to take the gloves off your heart and take those brass knuckles off your aortas and just say, look, you know. I care, you know, I care, you know, I care about you. There's something inside of us that wants to get out and do that or inside of me, I feel, you know, and it's such a for that beast inside of me is so foreign to me that it's hard for me to, when those desires come along, I almost reject them. You know, they, it almost feels like a foreign antibody. Like it feels like a, something that shouldn't be in my system. So it's like I got to fight through those uncomfortable moments. And instead of being hard sometimes, I got to be, I got to soften up. I got to get soft sometimes. Get soft, you know, not in the cock, but in the rest of my body, you know, in my heart, my, you know, maybe in my chest and stuff. My chest gets kind of hard a lot. But, uh, but yeah, so that's wild, you know, just to know that some of those things exist inside of me, you know, to know that like. And also, I think, you know, I just have a fear. I have a fear that, uh, you know, that I might, you know, that being in a real, you know, a marriage or that, any of that kind of shit down the road, I would be, you know, I would, uh, you know, I would cheat or I would lie or I would mess it up. You know, I have a, I have a lot of fear around that. 
Um, and some of that, as you know, it's just there's so much, you know, I'm, I, sometimes I don't know if I'm stronger than like all the influences that are out there sometimes. There's so much influence now. You know, you got titties, you're on the bus. You might be on the bus and they're trying to sell you cancer drugs. They got a poster for cancer. But then they got this girl there. She's like on the picture of the poster. It's like, I got cancer and she's got big old titties. You're like, what the fuck? Why are they pushing these titties at me? You know, they're trying, to get, they're trying to get me on that chemotherapy via tits. And so it's just, there's a lot of just levels to what's going. It's like you're just constantly bombarded with that cat, with that poise. You know, with sex, it's like sex, sex, sex. It's like, oh, you want these, you, you want these new beautiful, uh, you, you want these, this new uh, uh, kitchenware set? Well, look at this pussy. And you're like, oh, oh. It just never ends, man. It's just constant bombardment with, they using sex to sell everything. And, and it's just, you know, I don't see how women feel like they can even compete with that. You know, they're like how a woman can feel sexy when she can't even compete with the fucking advertisement for damn dishware. You know, or a, or a, or a silverware set. You know, you want these spoons? Get this ass. You're like, what? It's just, you know, and sometimes I just wonder if I can, you know, how, how much of that, you know, will I always be, up, you know, how I'm going to ride, how I'm going to ride through that in my life. But I guess, you know, you know, you just got to, you just got to, you know, you just have to just try and, I think, be honest as you battle it. Because we're all, everybody's out there battling that, man. You know, everybody's out there battling it. A lot of them, you know, marriages or relationships, they say this shit don't work because a lot of fucking do we, we're just humans. And we are, they, they're building these, this advertising, these models, you know, I mean, these advertising templates and models that are stronger than us. These things are like transformers with tits and transformers that do, you know, butt sex and all that. So you get out there and see, you're like, I can't, I can't battle this bot, you know? I'm just a human. I'm just built for the old time way where, you know, maybe you see a, you know, a, you know, a quarter, you know, 25% of a top of a tit hanging out of a church blouse. And you're like, oh, I can battle that. You know, I can fan that off. But the dark arts, the cauldron that is being just stirred out here in the world. Can I battle that? You know, can I battle that? And I think I think it's it's tough. I know it's tough for a lot of guys out there. I know it is. And man, don't feel alone. So many of my friends who are married, we talk all the time, and that's what we talk about. How can we? Uh, it's so hard. It's hard to fight that stuff because you're not just you're not saying it's not it's not that I don't love the person I'm with. It's not I don't love my spouse. It's not I don't care about my uh, significant other. It's that I'm not as, I don't have the skills yet or the power yet built into me to stay out of these gutter traps, you know, out there in these traps where they're out there selling coont, you know, and advertising with all this, you know, titties and booty artwork and everything. It's, it's, it's tough. And so some of that may, you know, I, and I have this pressure that I feel like, well, if I can't, you know, be a hundred percent sure that I'm going to be you know, perfect, then I'm afraid to move forward in, in relationships. I think that's probably what keeps me out of them. You know, in like an inverse kind of way, I think what keeps me out of some relationships is is knowing that I might just not be a strong enough person to, uh, to you know, fully take care of someone else. I guess that's one of my fears out there. But yeah, man, anyway, a lot of emo stuff out the gate, man. Let me think of some more stuff that's a little more, uh, you know, less emo, if we can get into something like that. You know, we had some fun calls that came in. Uh, these are some good ones, man. I love, you know, I'm starting to maybe I like this kind of Thursday, this follow-up episode, because this is the follow-up to that Monday. This that follow-up to that killer on Monday. And we had... um. This lady called in uh, a couple weeks ago. I was talking about burial and different ways you could be buried. You know, and I think there's only a couple of ways out there. You can do cremation and they do, 
um, throw you in that box, in that wooden box, you know, you know, wrap you in that plywood, you know, wrap Uncle uh, Carl in that plywood and drop him, you know, drop him in that, you know, in that $6,000 hole over there on the east of town. But this lady, she said she, they have another idea right here. This, this call came in on the hotline. Here we go. Yo, Theo, this is Rebecca from Palm Desert. Regarding cremation and burial. Thank you for calling Rebecca. I appreciate your call. Uh, Rebecca. I think that means actually in Spanish it means um, the flower, like the flower sales, sales, sales person, sales one, sales woman. Onward. There is another option and that other option you can see on a TED talk from J. Rim Lee. Um, Ooh, J. Rim Lee. Uh, swung too low, uh, bog, uh, we too low, holy sh fuck. Remember that? Remember when that plane was crashing? That's sad, but if you haven't seen that video, go hit, get that hitter right there. Um, Onward, there's it by J. Rim Lee, Onward. It's, it, she has a TED Talk called The Mushroom Death Suit, and it's a really interesting burial way with, where the suit is mushroom spores sewn into the suit, and oh that mushroom death suit now that sounds fucking tasty as hell to be honest with you you know i think i could do a mushroom death suit you know wrap me in that you know in that in that uh butter squash neck brace you know that's what i would do i think that freaking that cauliflower body cast put daddy in that you know that beef jerky straight jacket i could ride something like that you know something more flavorful you know that uh I could, you know, in that gua, you know, that guacamole straight jacket, put daddy in something flavorful. Well, they, you know, where people would be like, oh, damn, you know, he's going to heaven uh, with a little bit of, uh, you know, with a couple side items wrapped under his arms. You know, he's going to, you know, the damn, he's got a fucking brisket. They made him a brisket helmet. You know, that's a better way to be buried. You know, there's just so many great ways to, there, sh there should be so many great ways to be buried. And to know that somebody out there is selling a mushroom jacket. You know, where you can get all shroomed up and show up out in the universe. You know what I'm saying? When you show up in reincarnation and you ball and you got a freaking jacket full of shrooms, everybody's going to want to, you know, eat part of your fucking outerwear and be your friend. Let's hear more. It basically eats you um, and you are put back into the earth naturally so that you don't leave anything behind. And so it takes away the casket, takes away everything else. And you just get eaten by mushrooms. So how do you feel about that? You're, you're eating mushrooms while you're alive. Let the mushrooms eat you when you die. Wow. I'm going to find that TED Talk and I will post it in the, uh, in the info at the bottom. That's, yeah, that's something, huh? That shit, ooh, you know what? That's a great idea. What if it like this? All the animals you ate during your life. Okay, if you had a little bit of chicken, you know, if you had a couple of, you know, a little bit of vark, a couple of aardvark medallions or whatever, you know, a couple of, you know, you had some, some pork loins or whatever, a little couple of pig cocks, whatever you like, whatever you had during your life. Now, when you die and you're in that casket, all those animals get to come and eat you. Wouldn't that be adventurous? Because everybody would just, oh, dude, every... <clears throat> Everyone would show up to funerals. You're just sitting there being like, dang, I wonder what he ate. Next thing you know, they got like a couple of horses roll up. They got a zebra. You're like, damn, uh, uh, Cheryl had been eating zebra. That bitch had some tasty snacks. You know, all, you got a fucking giraffe comes in there and just puts his long tongue up in your ass. Dude, you could, could you even fathom that? What if? What if that's how we did it? Where that funeral, that was that payback. You know, not only do people come to pay back their love and their, their you know, to re-emote whatever you had emoted to them while you guys were alive. You know, not, did they, not only did people come to thank you for the sensations that you had given them. You know, and those just heart vibes, those fucking, you know, just, just them straight up beautiful Care Bear energy critters that you would just, you know, just put into their soul. Not only they come to thank you for those, but that they also, but that animals that you had eaten also got to, they got their strike back. You know, can you imagine all the cattle that would show up, all the steaks a lot of us have probably had, all the cattle shows up and they come and get that, that, that snack.
They come like, oh, this fucking, you had my ribs, bitch, I'm about to have your ribs. And a cow just rolls off with a fucking half a rack, you know, and no dip in sauces. Gang, that'd be beautiful. But I see, I see what you're saying there, and I appreciate you telling me about that. They got that mushroom jacket. So if you ate shrooms, shrooms eat you. Ooh. And then if they gave those shrooms out like 10 years later, they find those spores and grow them out and give them to everybody that was at the funeral. And everybody can take a mushroom and know what you've been going through. Everybody can get that hitter out of you. Wow. Dude, we're on to something. I love this idea. I'm going to find that TED Talk and I'm going to put it in the space there so you can see. But that's that, you know what I'm saying? That's that vegan jumpsuit. That mushroom straight jacket. That's that vegan jumpsuit right there. And that's what they're putting in, you know. That's what they're putting you in. You know, just in a fucking carrot coat with some, some radish Ray-Bans. Daddy's going to heaven. I like it. Thank you for that call. I appreciate that. Thank you for that call. We got another, man, this story that came in. We're going to get to uh, some of the responses you guys had for responses for the guy in London. We're going to get to those in just uh, just a minute. I want to let you know I got a couple of new dates coming on the books. I'm going to let you know about them right now. This uh, April 6th and 7th, I'll be in Tampa, Florida, and that's at Rock Brothers Brewing uh, in the Attic. Um April 20th through uh, the 21st, or, uh, we'll be in Hack, uh, Houghton Heights, New Jersey at Bananas Comedy Club. I will also be at Cherokee Casino. That's going to be June 9th out there in Oklahoma. I'll be in Calgary June 15th and 16th in Canada. And then I will be at Good Nights Comedy Club in Raleigh, North Carolina, July 20th and 21st. Those tickets are all uh, going to be available this week uh, via theovon.com slash tour, T-O-U-R. So if you can get a peep at that, get a peep at that. As well, if you haven't seen, I had that This Is Not Happening uh, launched out there, so you guys can go check that out. I'm going to put up a version of it at some point that is the full version, my version, you know, that's not edited out there by these companies and stuff like that. So we'll see about that. And uh, what else? What else we got? What else we got? Everybody's still fighting. You know, all these news stations still fighting. You know, that shit's crazy. That shit is crazy. You know, I don't see how anybody could have, how, 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 how news stations, like, here's the thing. Everybody talks about how horrible everybody's life is and everything since um, Trump got elected. Everybody I know's life is exactly the same. In fact, most of my uh, black friends or Latino friends are getting more work than ever. Um, and maybe it's different in different places, you know, maybe I'm not catching the vibe overall, you know, but it's like, damn, it's like some of this hate sometimes I'm like, when, what, 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 the only, most of the hate I see comes off of the news and shit. This that's the most hateful stuff you can see. You know, I miss the old news where they just were like, Hey, somebody won the raffle. And you were like, damn, Larry won the raffle. Damn. Hector won the raffle, and that was it. And they gave you that weather, and they gave you that sports score, and you were back to spending time with your family. There wasn't all these fear tactics out there, all this fear and bullshit. Just, I'm just tired, man. I'm tired. I'm tired of Hollywood just telling everybody how to live their life and how wrong we are. Oh, you're not doing this. You're not doing that. Don't you know this? Don't you know that? Don't you know we don't fucking know each other? Do you know that, Hollywood? We don't fucking know each other. In fact, you don't know me so much that you don't even know how to make entertainment for me anymore. That's why your Academy Awards were down by 20%. Because nobody fucking cares anymore. Because you don't care about me. You care about just your way. You care about just that money. But mark my words, man, money isn't loyal. M remember that. Money isn't loyal. You show up, you do your work, the rewards will follow. Riches will follow. It may be money. It may be a wealth of heart. It may be a wealth of knowledge. But you, some, some type of richness will follow. Do your work. That's what I'm learning. That's what I'm learning. I'm doing my work, boy. 
You want to come at this underdog? Come at this underdog. What's that nipping at your nuts? That's this killer. So we going, boy. We are coming. We are coming, dude. We got this call came in right here. Uh, this one looks funny. It says, funny teaching story. Let's Hi, go. Theo. My name is Paige, and I am a teacher in Seattle, Washington. Oh, Paige, thank you for calling. I was just up in uh, Tacoma last week, and that's uh, cold water country. You know, it's hard to get cold water out there. Even in the bird baths, you see birds stop by, check the water, too fucking cold, take off. Die of dehydration. You know, a lot of that water just too cold for animals even to... I caught a bass, it was fucking shivering. You know, sometimes you'll catch a bass or something and they they just flopping on the counter, you know? This one fucking shivering. He had water on his body, right? And he was bouncing on the wood, on the, on the dock. And he used the water on his body, just bouncing, 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 bouncing to spell out Hot cocoa. He just bounced. H, you know, boom, boom, boom. H. Oh, 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 boom. Oh. And he did all of that until he had no more moisture on his body. Hot cocoa. I was like, damn. Everything's cold out here. That's cold water country. Thank you for calling, Paige. Onward. So you wanted to know, like, who's watching your podcast. And so. I do want to know that. And I appreciate it. Thank you for calling. Let's hear more. It's. I'm a teacher, I'm a middle school teacher, and I watch your podcast. And. Oh, you're a middle school teacher, huh? That's amazing. A lot of middle school teachers out there, and that's beautiful, man. Especially when you got a beautiful female teacher and you a young boy, you show up. Because you sound attractive, Paige. You know, you sound attractive to me. And all you got to be is about a four or up to be attracted to daddy, you know. So you sound attractive to me, and um, onward. Something funny that happened the other day, and I was thinking about it when you were talking about, like, being in middle school and just, like, how weird people are in middle school, but... I also coach volleyball, and so I... Mm. And I'm not supposed to be thinking about... I'm not thinking about... That wasn't a mm to middle school volleyball. That was just, uh, you know, when I think about like a, a like kind of an attractive teacher teaching volleyball, that thing kind of wild, you know, that thing gets me, you know, makes me flare a little, you know? Make my, make my loins turn into lions. And that's really just... A, all you got to do is switch a letter. You know that? I turn my loins into lions, boy. Yeah. I changed at school, and so I was changing my classroom for volleyball. Okay, you're changing. Let's go back a second. Here we go. I'm, I'm gonna shut up. Well, and so I was changing my classroom for. Let's go back a little more. Here we go. School and just like how weird people are in middle school, but I also coach volleyball, and so I changed at school, and so I was changing my classroom for volleyball. Mmm. -hmm. Man, I don't know if I'm being a pervert or if I'm just being just regular. You know, in Los Angeles, you're not allowed to uh, have any interest in women anymore. So, you know, I feel like what we're doing right now is very, it's like almost like prohibition. But that I'm secretly having to do this in a studio somewhere on the third floor of a building onward. And I just like left all my clothes on like near my desk. And I obviously like changed into a sports bra. And so I like have to Oh, man. Like, I don't, you ever have like one of your fantasies? You feel like it just called a telephone number? That's what I feel like right now. I mean, this is, this is something, you know, this is a middle school tell, teacher telling me she just changed in her classroom and you got me, you know, you got my wiener starting to loiter around a, you know, around my waistline. You feel me onward? I have to take off my bra and oh, I got to hear that part again. Sorry change into a sports bra and so I like have to take off my bra and so my like bra and all my clothes are like sitting there and um the next day but you couldn't see the bra so the next day the kids came in they said I knew you lived here I knew you lived here you have all your clothes here you have a suitcase here and like I have to keep my suitcase at school because it doesn't fit in my apartment because I live in Seattle and so I was like you know what and I'm like grabbing my clothes and I'm putting it in this bag I'm like none of your business and out falls my bra onto the ground and there was two eighth grade boys and one of them ran for the door he they both went <gasps> and ran and oh he probably went to masturbate i'm guessing i mean i couldn't imagine that you know and i'm not trying you know and I, I know you're probably thinking he went for something else but at eighth grade if an attractive teacher dropped a bra in front of me <laughs> what I would be, I'd, I, dude, I would probably be, I'd be, I'd turn into Louis C.K., boy. I'd start wine gardening those plants or whatever, Harvey Weinsteiner. 
I'd hit those plants and just start Weinsteining. You know what I'm saying? I'd put a, you know, I'd put a pearl necklace on a cactus if you had a fucking cactus in the window. Onward. And the other boy, he just stood there staring at it, and I jumped on it like it was a grenade covering it up, and I was like, Oh, God. A hot teacher jumping on her bra in the classroom? I mean, this is... Paige, thank you so much. I got to hear... I'm going to play this again later in the car, but I want to hear it again. Uh, let's hear a little more. Thank you, Paige. Get out of here. Get out of here. And so they ran out of the classroom, but, you know, it's tough out here. And also, <laughs> I'm coming to your show with my best friend, Taylor, this weekend and in Tacoma, and we're so excited to see you. Oh, I didn't even realize, Paige. I thought that was from this week. Um, thank you. Thank you for calling. Uh, thank you so much. Um... And I hope you and Taylor had a nice time. Wow, that's a sexy story, though. I just heard that's a sexy story. You know, and shout out to the kid who stayed around, that eighth grader. That's a G right there. That boy sees that brawl hit the ground. The, the one dude, he's out. That dude ain't going to get laid until probably late into college. But that eighth grade boy, he's thinking, man, you know, maybe we're playing strip poker without the cards. You know, and, and, and Miss Page went first. Oh, man, you make me want to go back to middle school. Man, you make me wish I couldn't really read and spell that well, you know? And, you know, I just, you know, I could do some algebra, but barely. So that I could go back to middle school and just apply myself to some fine teachers, you know? Thank you for calling, Paige. That's a, that's a, oh, that's everything. Dude, I remember, I'm trying to think of the hot... I mean, first of all, I remember as a kid in, in middle school, I was attracted to any teacher, you know, even if it was like a male teacher with real long hair who conditioned his hair. If that dude turned around to face the board and he had a nice ass, boy, I'd think about him. You know, I mean, I had feminine wiles, but if he came across as, a, as feminine into my eyes, boom, then that just projected right into my brain because you and all you had to do was think about something. And your dick would start looking for somebody. Remember that? You know, I never owned a pet growing up really outside of, you know, small ground game. Um, but, man, having a penis when you're young, it's like having a pet. It's like having a, you know, it's like having a, you know, it's like having a runt, a runt ferret that has attention deficit disorder. You know, your dick will start looking around. You know, it's a down, everything, it's just, your dick is just, why? <laughs> you know, your dick will eat a piece of, you know, your dick will eat, a, will eat a corn kernel, I bet. Your dick has so much, you know, relativity at that point. When you're young, your penis got that vibe, boy. Your penis will just show up. You, you, I mean, your, your penis will provide services. You're reading a book, you don't have a, um, a book stopper. A word, remember, piece of paper, bam, your dick shows up. I got you, dog. You know? When you're young, your penis is violent. It's vibrant. You know, your penis is looking for things to do. I bet, man, I bet there's got to be a video out there. Somebody taught their penis to eat a piece of corn. And if you have that video, send that in, man. I'm not going to, you know, I'll, I'm not going to watch it more than one time. You know, but I will watch it for you know, the artisticness of it and the, you know, hashtag vegetarian. But yeah, man, those, you know, that was young. And I, pre you know, I remember, I remember who the, oh man, we had this teacher. I think her name was like Miss Baldoin or Miss Boudreaux or somebody. I think I was in seventh or eighth grade. And she had, perf she wore like perfume and she had, I mean, she just looked like I, 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 every boy I know can't do math from my hometown, and it's because of her. It's her fault. Dude, I wanted to get problems wrong so I could stand there and just smell her while she, like, showed me the work. She's like, you got to show your work, and I'm just like, I can't think because 60% of the blood is in my penis and nuts while I'm sitting there listening to her. You know, I couldn't even bend my legs. That's how erect I was. You know, I had to roll over to her desk and then, you know, pull myself up by my arms. And those were just, I mean, Miss Bowder, what was her name? Miss Von, 
well, so I don't know. She just, I remember, here's how sexy she was. I remember she wore red. That's all I remember. She might have never worn red, but I, that's just what I remember. But red is that color of sex, of lust. It's just like in my brain, she wore red. She had dark hair. And like, you know, all of my youthful masturbation and probably a lot of my young erections, I, you know, I, you know, I would attribute to her probably. Or, you know, if I could leave something in my will, it would be for her. You know, it would be for her to get, you know, maybe now in her life. I don't know if she has a man now or whatever, but, you know, a lot of women, as they get a little bit older, they still want to catch some, you know, you know, some routine cop, you know, some hard D. And I was young back then, but, you know, uh, my dick had an old soul. I always felt like that. And my dick had seen things. My dick had seen railroads being built. You know, my dick had heard like a, you know, like a printing press in the distance. My dick had seen, my dick had an old soul. I had an old soul dick. And if I could leave something in a will or something, if I, have, I would leave a lot of those old directions of my past to her. What was her name, Miss? Oh, it might have been Miss Garofalo, I think. I don't, did she change her name? I don't know. She Oh, she changed her name one time, and then everybody was like, whoa, she's divorced, you know? So then, who? I can't even imagine. Half the class, you know, came to school sluggish or cross-eyed the next day. Because when you were young, when I was young, if you jerked off too much, you went cross-eyed. One of your eyes would get a little dry because you were expelling a lot of the moisture out of your body through your wiener. But what else is going on, dude? I got about six days right now of uh, no masturbation, so I'm feeling good about that. You know, and if somebody's struggling out there with those dark arts, hit that hotline, 985-664-9503. You know, you can be alone while you jerk off, but don't feel alone or feel shameful for doing it. You know, it's an addictive world out there. You know, where, you know, you 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 at the market, you're trying to buy some applesauce, and, you know, the advertising is, you know, they're just showing you somebody's, ad, you know, a hot, chick's ass full of apples and you're like wouldn't you like these get this uh mots get these mots six packs and you're like what the fuck they're making it hard for it. because then once you got that you got to go get them other hitters now you got now you need mental health now you need um them erectile uh tablets and i look i pop five millies of cialis out the gate dude i just got a whole shipment of um uh some i think it's from india some indian levitra and that shit got my legs sweating at night but i'll take it dude i'll take five millies if i'm just rolling around the the the, the neighborhood because i like to feel you know spoked out i like to feel awake boy you got your if you if you're running on five millies in your weenie dude even the next day you still got two milligrams in it you know you still got two milligrams in you I see a dude, an old man walking with a cane, and I'm like, Pfft. same, bro, same. But what else we got, man? We're gonna get. Let's get to this London caller in just a second. I want to let you know about Beachbody on demand. And a lot of y'all like, Theo, what you talking about, man? You you trying to sneak an ad in on us here? I'm giving you this ad. You know, we still got to do some ads right now because we don't. You know, we fucking got to get stuff in here. You know, we got to get things in here. I, I, just, I, just, I just had to order two chairs off the internet. And them chairs was $170 per chair. Per chair. So those are coming in, you know. But Beachbody On Demand, it's an online fitness streaming service. They got all those, fa the famous ones, P90X. Um, you know, uh, uh, what else they got? Insanity, 21 Day Fix, T25, 3 Week Yoga Retreat. That's the one I'm doing. Because, you know, I'm trying to stretch out before I, you know, go for that beach fitness. So I'm going for that three-day yoga retreat. And those are beach body programs. You can access all of them 24-7. So you wake up at 4 a.m., you know what I'm saying? You, pay, you take a urine or whatever in your house and, you know, you look at your lady or your, if you got a man, you look at your man. You know, check on the children or whatever. Everything's cool. You're like, fuck, I got a lot of extra energy right now. You could watch Dateline again, or you could jump on to Beachbody On Demand. They got all kind of programs. It's accessible on your computer, your web TV, smartphone, whatever. It has programs for any fitness level, everything. And you need to give it a try. So right now, my listeners can get a free trial membership when you text 
TPW to 303030. So that means text TPW to 303030. That's the number. 303030, text TPW, and you'll get to access the entire platform. I'm going to try this yoga. I'll let you know how it's going. Oh, so thank you guys for your patience and support. Let's get in. Uh, let's see. We got another call that came in here. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Yeah, we had that cover that came in by Tiny Sandhu last week, that Boneyard. It was cool. You know, I don't know if I, it wasn't, you know, it, uh, the audio I think on it was tough for me and I never heard of Boneyard. But I'm so grateful to Tiny, man, just to think that somebody's out there helping out. Somebody's out there just sending something in. A lot of great music has come in. And we're still going to try to do that special music episode where we roast all the music. I know. I know. Uh, we're going to do it. Um, what else? Let's do this, man. Let's take. Uh, let's get into, into this London calls right here, man. Let's get into them. Um, this call came in last week, and this was from uh, this young fella in London. And I've had so much response to it. I'm going to play a little bit of it for you uh, right now. All right, see you, mate. Um, I'm not sure if it's obvious from my uh, tone, but a little bit uncomfortable leaving this message, but just sort of want someone to talk to about this. And um, I know the Theo Von past weekend family. I uh, think there's some people who can give me some useful feedback. Um, I guess... I've run into a bit of a uh, crossroads in my life, sort of chatting shit, but um, yeah, I've got a bit of a, a bit of a drug problem, and uh, yeah, I don't know, my problems that um, I keep on justifying everything with like self pity, and I don't know, at what point do you stop feeling sorry for yourself? It's a great question, you know, and I appreciate that call. Uh, we had a couple calls that came in that were, were responses for you, and we had a text as well that came in. And if you missed the end of last week's episode, that's what this was about, you know. We had this young, you know, we had this young fella call in, twenty years old from London, and um, and I just got a ton of response. And the interesting thing for me was the next day I was thinking, like, man, what can I do, you know, to offer some, you know, to offer to be of service to try and help out. What can I do? You know, I don't live in London. I don't. And literally, I'm thinking about that. And some man just out of the blue, uh, I think his name is Alex Hitchens, just sent me an email. And he said, uh, here, I'll read it right now. Just out of the blue. Um, he said, oh, man, dang, here he goes. Uh, dude, um, please pass on to the last caller from your hotline if you want a UKK fella to talk to. 12 years sober myself from booze and can be there as a friendly ear who has some understanding of addiction and depression if he wants to talk. And he just sent his number out of the blue, out of the blue, man. And it was literally like, wow, it's just one of those moments. Like, I don't know what to do. And then boom. So, you know, I reached out to the caller and offered, you know, and offered that. And we have some suggestions that came in from our listeners. Um, and I can't control, you know, what the caller does it, you know, and it's, you know, and it, it's not about that. You know, it's not about like, you know, we're not a professional organization here. You know, I can't control if, uh, you know, if that young man feels like he needs help right now. You know, or if he gets help right now. If he, if, you know, I, no, I can't, I, I can't make it, it, anybody's choices. You know, but I, I don't think there was a man out there when that boy wasn't talking that you didn't feel something. You know, and if I feel something, man, then if there's something there, if I'm feeling something, there's something there that I know in my, it's not even a choice I make. It's just, an, it's something inside of me. When I feel something, I, you know, we have to take, we have to take, you know, I don't know if it's some sort of action, but I just know that there's something there. And so we had some couple of calls that came in. Here we go. Hey, this is Dylan from Malden. Anyways, this is for my buddy in London. This is Dylan from uh, London. Um, I'm sorry you know, about what happened to your father, your sickness in your family. Uh, what you said last episode sounded like something that's really hard to get through, you know. Any, any of us would have a hard time getting through that. 
Um, but what I'd say for advice, if you really need advice, I'm 26 years old, so I'm not too much older than you. But what I'd say is, um, number one is your health. Like, make sure your health is, is all right, because that's going to keep you strong. Make sure that you eat organic foods. Make sure you learn how to cook. Um, you said you were, you know, you live an excessively com- comfortable life. Maybe you don't know how to cook, but definitely learn how to cook uh, vegetables, you know, cooking stuff in the oven. It's really simple. And get yourself exercise and get yourself to the gym because that's going to have those two things. going to have so many uh, positive influences in your, in your life. It's going to get you women. It's going to get you confidence. It's going to make you feel a lot better. And when you become health conscious, you're not going to want to do drugs. Wow. And that's a good point. Those are, you know, that's, it is amazing. It's amazing how when you get that blood flowing that your blood will do things for you that you can't do for yourself. It's amazing when we start to stir the good parts of our body that they will start to inspire us. You know, you start, once you go to the gym, you get back from the gym, you don't want to eat that cake now. Now you instead, you maybe want to have at least a carrot cake, you know, that a little bit of meat them in the middle. You don't want carrots, but you don't want cake, bro. I'll fucking do them both, you know. I might not have uh, pudding, but I might have some fucking, uh, you know, I might have a, um, you know, some, uh, a couple of uh, beets you know, a couple of red beets and some um, pedophores, you know, or some lady fingers. I might have some Brussels sprouts, you know, with lady fingers under them or something. You know what I'm saying. And so that, yeah, if you get that fitness, man, once you you get your body stirring, dude, and let it do the magic, your body will start to do things that it wants to do that are good for you. Like he's saying, you do a couple, you know, so a little bit of fitness and a little bit of veggies. You know, and now I know sometimes it's hard to do that if you actually have some, you know, if you're caught in the depths of, of addiction, that that stuff can be really tough. Uh, but thank you, uh, Dylan, for those uh, for those suggestions. Here we go with another call. Here we go. Hey, Theo. It's uh, another one of your London-based fans here, Max. Hey, Max. I appreciate you calling onward. Just been watching the most recent one from uh, the 19th. Anyway, just a couple of things. Firstly, I wanted to say, um, you know, I'm calling about the guy called in also from London, um, not just because we're both talk funny i wanted to say firstly you said near the end there that you hope that one day this week or in your life you'll be as brave as uh, that man for reaching out and uh, i just want to say from my perspective uh, you're already there man you know it's an amazing thing you do here and i think everyone who watches can see there's more to you than just a joke man you're the funniest guy on the internet there's a real interesting open and honest side to you that i think really uh, resonates with people because you're real man and i think that's really cool uh, thanks, man. Well, I appreciate you saying some of that, you know. Uh, you know, damn, man, you hit me in a tear duct for a second, dude. Um, you know, and we'll get to your, your suggestion. I just, you know, I haven't heard this call yet. <clears throat> so uh, I appreciate you saying that, though. You know, I think a, a lot of my life, I just, uh, you know, I find that I feel the best when, you know, sometimes it's the only place that I really feel good. Like I can, you know, do shows and stuff and that stuff feels good, but... I think I feel the best when, uh, you know, when I feel just connected to people. Um, and somehow in doing this and, you know, that London key, you know, just something, I don't know, when people call in and there's some real shit going on, I just, I don't know, it makes me feel a little bit okay. You know, like I feel like we're, you know, like we ain't, like we're not giving up. You know, all of us, like we didn't come this far, you know, to stay where we are. You know, it just, I don't know. I'm rambling. But thank you, man. That's what I mean. I just mean thank you. That's nice of you to say, Max. Onward. Just, anyway, I wanted to reply. I didn't catch the guy's name who's having a bit of a tough time of it now. You know, I don't know if I caught it either. I know he texted as well. He said that his father had come down with uh, MS and that his mother had had a schizophrenic break and had left them. And that's what he was, uh, you know, that was things that was going on in his life. And he'd been dealing with um, some cocaine use. And he, as he phrased it, more days in the month than not. And that's hard, man, because you get on it, you know, you do cocaine one night, you're out for two days. You know, you're out for that next day, the next day is out, you're done. You know, you're not usually doing it that next night. So unless you start to build up a real tolerance where you can then go get that hitter that next night, you know, you can gram down. You know, that, then that's probably a tough universe to be in. But let's hear more. Uh, but yeah, that's where he was from. And, then he, and his question was, how, you know, when I get to self-pity, how do I stop feeling sorry for myself? Onward. Now, um, but I felt what he was saying like you did, I think. And I, I empathize to an extent. You know, I know that feeling much like you said you do. And uh, I don't know, maybe this is a bit weird, but, you know, we're both uh, this past weekend listeners. You know, don't know how many people in London are. Maybe you know that. 
But uh, I just wanted to say, you know, if you, and if you don't air this, you just want to kind of reach out separately, I'd be very happy to, to meet this guy. You know, there's things I'm dealing with. Maybe we could uh, help each other out somehow, you know, be each other's support for trying to improve our lives, get away from these dark arts, get that hitter boy. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome, man. I've never, I, I, and I swear, guys, I have not heard this call. I hadn't heard this call um, to hear someone say, get that hitter in British, man. I, You know, I might change, I might have to change my feelings about the British, man. I mean, hell, dude, another couple years here in America, there's going to be a whole boatload of us going back to Britain. You can get, bet that. We'll see you on the shores, buddy. We are coming back. You know, you can't even have any freedoms over here anymore. Um. But, you know, man, I, you know what, I appreciate that, Max. And you know what, I will. Um, I'll share your information, you know. I'll share your information. I'm going to share your information. I'm going to share uh, the gentleman Alex's information who, who, um, who emailed me. And thank you. You know, it's, uh, you know, I can just hear in your voice, man, that, you know, you got some care in you, dude. And I appreciate that. You know, because this life is fucking hard, bro. It's hard for some people. And I think what I can, what I can relate to, because you say you could empathize, and what I can relate to when I heard that kid... I could just relate to just hurting. You know, I, I, I couldn't really put my... F yeah, I mean, I've hurt. You know, I've been in pain, you know, high and feeling uncomfortable and, and not liking myself and those things. But I could just... I could relate to him feeling not good. We can all relate to that. Let's hear one more call that came in for uh, for, for some thoughts here. Here we go. Hey, Theo. This is Julio from New Hampshire. Julio. From Hamptown. That hemp town, baby, hemp, hemp. You know what I'm saying? Hemping ain't easy. And also, we're going to launch this new tour. Uh, the Dark Arts Tour is coming, guys, so I'm excited. We'll be adding some more dates onto that. Uh, Julio, thank you for calling. Let's hear more. This is a message to that, that guy that left the, the comment about when do you stop feeling sorry for yourself or, or when do you stop making excuses. Um I think it's it's all about when you take accountability for your for yourself. I think that's the big turnaround for a lot of people. Um, I, I see them as soon as they they look in the mirror and they take accountability. The pity stops and everything. They stop feeling sorry, and, and that sorry feeling turns into a drive. Mm -hmm. As in, man, I've been I've been messing up really bad lately. And, and I got to really get it together. So taking that accountability is the first step. So hang in there, brother. I, I, had, a, I had a brother that, that lost his life to drugs. And, uh, you know, he started to make that turnaround and, and unfortunately went back for one last uh, taste. And, and that was it. That was the end of it. Take accountability, be strong, and, and move onward. Man, thank you, uh, Julio. And I'm sorry to hear about your brother, man. You know, I, uh, you know, my sit, like, you know, one of my family members went into treatment today. You know, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about this kind of stuff, but, um, but you just got me thinking about it, Julio. One of my family members went into treatment today, and, uh, you know, it's hard. It's hard when you, when you have, you know, when there's not anything that you can do. You know, you can love as much as you want. You can try as much as you want. You can, you can try to help. You can pay for this. You can pay for that. You know, people, you know, people, people can't change until they're ready. They can't. And there's not, there's not a ton that we can do about it. But I think we can offer suggestions. You know, we're not telling this young man what to do, how to live his life. You know, he's young. So that, that another thing is with, you know, sometimes you don't, you don't see your problems when you're that young. You can't see it. You know, it might take, he might be out there. Who knows? You know, he might never need, you know, he may never need help. I mean, do we, some of us maybe think he does? Yeah, we might. We don't know, though. But it's nice that there are people who, you know, that at least we care to show up and think about it. You know, maybe you were just listening and you said a prayer for him in your heart. Maybe you thought about him. You know, I think, I think all of that kind of stuff counts. You know, anything that I'm not doing that's not focused on me, that's what, that shit counts. I don't care, you add it all up. I don't think the earth would have existed this long if, if there were, weren't a ton of people out there who wanted, you know, humanity to be alive and wanted us to exist and wanted us to experience. You know, even just that little drive inside of us as people, I think that all accumulates out there. 
But I, I appreciate you for having some strength there to share, share your words there, Julio. You know, I feel, uh, you know, when you said that you lost your brother, it made me just feel grateful to have had my brother. You know, I spoke to my brother this morning. And, um, and for years, man, I didn't have him. You know, I, he was out there, and, and we didn't have any sense of family growing up, man. All, all our family did was fight. You know, I didn't love my brothers and sisters, dude, honestly. You know, it hurts me to say that. But I didn't care. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't give a fuck about them. I didn't give a fuck about me. Uh, but then this morning, you know, like, you know, I just get to talk to my brother. And we just, you know, even if it's just for like a minute in the world, we get to be brothers, you know, on the phone. And it's just like, I could I could tell him a million times I'm happier my brother. I could tell, he could tell me that. But the there's nothing, it doesn't, whatever we say doesn't have anything on whatever there is, this weird little magic that's in the air when we're able to just be brothers, you know? And to know that there's somebody out there as close in format and template as me, to me, um, who's also trying to survive and trying to take care of themselves. And so when those people are struggling, like your brother was, uh, you know, I know that pain is um, probably really intense. And... Uh, and I appreciate you sharing sharing that thought with us today and sharing your um, experience and your hope and your strength and stuff with uh, with that young fellow out there in London and, and, and anybody anywhere. And this show ain't about getting off drugs. This show isn't about all of that shit. If you fall, if you balling out there, if you got an eight ball and you just bought a fucking swing set, you know what I'm saying? Gang, gang, boy, enter the Paralympics. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? If you can do cocaine and fucking cook hot dogs with your friends, do that shit. Enjoy yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you drink or you, you know, you free basing out there, but you still, you know, clocking into work and feeding your kids, then go on. This isn't about any of that. Boy, you know what I'm saying? As soon as they come out with a little bit of a safer LSD, you know I'll be out there. You know I'll be hiding little, uh, them little bitty square post-it notes under my tongue. Gang, gang, boy. I'll take LSD in that eyedropper, boy. What are you seeing? The future. So this isn't about that. This isn't that show. But this is a show where if somebody fucking calls in and they're struggling, dude, we'll be there. You know what I'm saying? It's like if somebody's calling in and they're turning up. You know what I'm saying? If you knuckle deep, if you're freaking six feet deep in the graveyard in a mushroom jacket and your brain starts taking that scavenger hunt on that dope, Gang, gang, we'll be right there. Hit that hotline. Get greasy, boy. Get greasy and share that trip with us. We're not looking down on anything like that. We're not looking down on anything like that, man. Everybody's welcome here. You know what I'm saying? If they tell you, if people, and if somebody in your life has ever told you, you told you you aren't welcome, then you are definitely double welcome here. You know, if somebody's ever told you that, you know, because of, you, you know, uh, that your people or the, you know, you, you, you that your people aren't um, good people or you're, you know, just because of where you're from, you don't deserve it. You don't, you know, people look at you sideways because you're from the poor side of town, man. Fuck them. You know, fuck them. Because you know what? One day we'll see them on the other side of town, dude. You know what I'm saying? When we, when we, when we neighbors, oh, now, now who's a neighbor? And now, you know, I'm going to cook the liver and onions on the stove. And since we share an air conditioning vents in this fancy townhouse condominium complex, I'm going to blow this. I'm going to blow this most nasty cooking smells ever into your house. Liver and onions, boy. Duck, duck vaginas. I'm going to grill up a pan full of duck vaginas and let that and let that smoke smog smell seep through the air vents into your house. And now you come looking at me sideways. You know, and you don't know anything about them duck VGs because you never had to eat all of that. You never been out there. You know what I'm saying? You never had, you never, you never been out there having to eat uh, chicken fillets, whatever the fuck that is. You know, you never been out there eating pigeon, boy. Salmon fronts. I've had salmon fronts, bruh. And that's just head and skin, daddy. Gang. <sighs> so, the, man, look, man, I've had fun, man. I've had fun. I had fun. I'm glad that I came in here today. I'm glad that uh, you guys have been so supportive. Um, and I'm glad. Look, man, if you want to check out you know, some of your favorite celebrities, I got I to gotta get this ad in there right now. You got to go to Starflow, man. Starflow ain't a joke, dude. 
You know, and, and when everybody's stealing everybody's like uh, information right now, Starflow is out there keeping your stuff sh- safe. Starflow is reshaping the influencer economy by providing a network enabling an ecosystem where individuals can thrive and where everybody can interact and participate in the creation and consumption of value. If you're a fan, if you're a creator, if you are, um, uh, if you're an advertiser, if you're a brand, you can all meet in this place, starflow.com. Check out the app. And this, But this isn't a place where people are stealing your information. This is a place where th- we are keeping things clean. So you like Muhammad Ali, you know what I'm saying? You like Abraham Lincoln, you like listening to you know Abraham Lincoln bootlegs and shit, or maybe some videos he might have left, go find your favorite celebrity. Starflow.com. Check out the app. Just... Go see what it's like to be in a safe environment on the internet. Not out here where if you Google, you know, uh, you know you're looking for, for a pair of shoes. Next thing you know, you walk outside and there are three models walking by in those pairs of shoes. Because that's the dark arts of advertising. And that's what they're doing. they advertising to you. It's all advertising, boy. F- fuck them, man. Make your own moccasins and check out Starflow.com. Or, or, or the app, Starflow. Oh, man. Man, I appreciate you guys being here, you know? I don't have to do a comedy set tonight, and I feel good about it, honestly. You know, I feel good. I want to catch up on that Joe Rogan episode with Owen Benjamin and uh, Kurt Metzger. Kurt is so crazy. If you get to go watch that, Kurt is such a... I just love watching Kurt. He's so funny to watch. Uh, happy birthday to Fahim Anwar. He's a young comedian, and his his birthday... Uh, and, and, and it's his birthday, so check that out. Uh, if you get a chance, go check out his stuff. Um, man, you guys got me filled up with gratitude, you know, uh, you guys got me filled up with gratitude, uh, you know, I went to a meeting this morning and it just, just remember, you know, just, if I go into a meeting in the morning, sometimes it sets my, it sets me for the day a little bit more comfortably, you know, and I'm happy to be alive for another week and be able to, you know, at least be able to embrace what's going on around me and to show up and, and be able to spend time with you guys, dude, this was fun. We had some fun stuff. We talked about some fun stuff. You know, uh, I'll make sure to reach out to the London gent with with some of the information that you guys had. We had some other callers for people that are entering, talking about their weekend. We'll hit those on Monday. But um, we're, we're going to leave you out here with a little bit of Coley Garrett. And uh, and I'm going to leave you out just, just saying thank you. You know, you guys inspired me. Some people inspire me just by people giving an F. You know, I talked to a buddy of mine, a buddy of mine, Ned. He lives down in North Carolina. And I met him. We met at a comedy show I guess I don't know and we've become buddies and you know um and he uh and I was talking to him he sent me a text yesterday he said man you know when that kid that London kid called it got me geeked out I was geeking up and uh and then the emails and everything it just made me feel you know it made me feel it made me feel that's what it did boom made me feel um what else I was one to think oh I wanted to say uh oh I got some candles, man. I'm going to unbox them right now. Hold on one second. Let me grab them. I know what these are. They have uh, this company, this, and they don't work. You know, they're saying this is just a gift from my boy Jay Piedmont. Pimonte, and we'll put it the candle link to their company. This was just a gift that he sent. This wasn't he asked me to advertise or anything, but I know people like to see some unboxing and stuff videos, so I'm about to crack into this sack of damn fucking light fixtures, dude. Uh, we got right here, boy. Get this bitch. And weren't we talking about candles earlier? Oh fuck! You put all this paper in here. These little bitty pieces of paper, shredded paper. Man, we just got the studio, Jay. I can't even open this, man. Not here, anyway. I'm going to have to open this outside or in, you know, in a poor person's front yard where they don't care if you just leave a bunch of shit out there, boy. Dude, I remember when I was growing up, they, somebody around had a veterinarian. I guess they used to throw dead animals in our ditch. And Man, we had... I never, I never wanted to really know nothing about animals, you know? But the problem was all the... But I, I knew a bone structure, man. Dude, I knew a damn, I mean, I could, uh, you know, I could, I could show you if I, I could point out a pelvis of a yellow retriever from probably about 40 feet away. And it's just, those are the things you learn, man, where I'm from. You know, those are the th- things you learn. 
I remember the first time I ever even got into my neighborhood, dude. This old man, he died in a ditch fire. Uh, you know, uh, he almost, he came out of it the first time, flaming boy, throwing punches. He was still fighting. This dude was probably 86 years old. And he was fighting this other fat guy that didn't, uh, didn't own a shirt. You know, and I don't think this dude was Irish, but he said he was kind of Irish. But, um, but he didn't own a shirt and he only spoke in vowels. And this dude, they were fighting. And this, he threw that man in a ditch fire. And that dude came back at him, boy, swinging with them flaming, flaming fists. And then the dude uh, threw him. Then they threw him back in. But, yeah, so that's where I'm from, boy. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here. You're out here. Uh, we got the we got new dates coming up. Dark Arts Tour. I'll tell you more about it on Monday. You guys be good to yourselves. You probably uh, deserve it. Let's leave out of here with again with my boy. Uh, Coley Garot. Daisy, I've been thinking, thinking, and you know, thinking it is a sin. If they ask you where you're going, just tell them where it is you've been. Monday through to Friday, I shelve them days as well. Must be Still I try to steal My mornings From these agents of misery Daisy Oh the weekend That always gets me through Daisy Oh the mountain I may never do the best you can, you know. Don't be too hard on yourselves. Do the best you can. That's what we're trying to do. My, uh, I want to thank uh, Chris Perez. You know, this young gentleman, man, is beautiful Latino. He's probably 100 or maybe even 70% Latino. I don't even know. But he's going to come in. He's going to edit this. My boy Chris Perez is going to come in tonight and edit this hitter. So I'm grateful for that, you know. He's been helping produce this thing. My boy Nick Davis out there, you know, came over part of Corolla's camp, and he came over where he's helping out. My boy Ryan Sherb, man. I, dude, I'll send this. Fuck, I'll get finished sometimes 1 a.m., and, I'll, just, and I'll, need, I'll need help editing an audio, and I'll get that text from him. Hey, man, you need some help? I'm up. Man. Could not be more thankful. Well, I'll play it for you one more time on the way out. This is Ode to Daisy by Coley Garat. And I'll see you guys uh, on Monday. If you need something, hit the hotline, 985-664-9503. As always, look, you know, I don't have any medical training. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So uh, please take that into account. Y'all be good. Daisy, I've been thinking. And you know, thinking it is a sin If they ask you where you're going Just tell them where it is you've been Monday through to Friday I shelve them days as what well. must be Still I try to steal my morning from these agents of misery Daisy Oh the weekend That always gets me through Daisy Oh the mountain I may never get over you I may never get over Maybe I'm useless Just like a ribbon round a barn But when you take no prisoners You know I really wouldn't mind being one Daisy, you're the shadow That sinks into the bone Daisy, you're the night train that I take.
take